Peace to the family. We're here to talk to you today about the coronavirus, the mythos, and its actualities. Let's go to the next slide. I'm on a time constraint. The coronavirus is nothing new. If we go to this can of Lysol, we'll see clearly, and Lysol been around for as long as these damn viruses have been around. If we go to this can of Lysol, we're going to see that it protects you from the human coronavirus. Next, we're going to also see death toll. We're going to see right here it's protecting you from coronavirus. So the question is, is this virus as detrimental as they say it is, the new strand? Because we've been fighting it, we've been killing it off. Or is there something else to it? Let's go to the next slide. So that's the zip of day right there. Now, I have to defer our attention to this antibiotics. You got medical practitioners and other people in the medical industry suggesting to people that they take antibiotics. The suffix biotics, biotic, are related to or resulting from living things. You're dealing with living things. Viruses are neither dead or alive. Biotics ascertains to good bacteria and bad bacteria. When people take antibiotics, they actually eliminate both. And that's why antibiotics are so detrimental and responsible for the rise of a whole lot of diseases and implications and malfunctions in the human body to this very day. Let's go to the next slide. So you don't use antibiotics to eliminate viruses. Let's get that through your head. Now the next thing is antibacterial soaps. People going nuts, they wiping tables off, they wiping chairs off, they secretly wiping their ass when no one's looking because they think they're gonna kill the virus or eliminate the virus. This is not true. Antibacterial means it is eliminating good bacteria and bad bacteria, not good viruses or bad viruses. Get that through your brain. That does nothing for you. It's just like when people be wearing those masks and they think the mask is protecting them, but they can shake someone's hand and get the virus. Listen, even the mask, the holes in the mask are over 0.7 microns big. The reason why I have to tell you that is because the virus is 0.7 microns big, which means there's enough fitting room for the virus to seep through the mask and still you contract it. So that's obsolete. You want to use soaps and toothpaste that do clean your hands, but use soaps and toothpaste that do not have triclosin. If you want to protect yourself from a virus, Boost the amount of vitamin C that you get. But in order to do that, you got to take in the right amount of magnesium because you can't absorb calcium properly unless you absorb the right amount of magnesium, which is going to take me not to vitamin D itself, but not D2, but D3. And people don't even know the distinction between D2 and D3. So much to talk about. Let's keep moving forward. I'm just putting as much information out as possible. So now I was looking up this lady named Dana Ashley. She's pretty dope, and she made a reference to this book, Magnetobiology. Yeah, 200 and change. You want to hide something from there, bro? Not only put it in the book, make it an expensive book. <laughs> but listen, she really went in on this point in the book, and I thought this was very powerful. She was talking about the new technology and, and our, our craving for the advancements of technology. One of the main things that we love and praise technology for, particularly Wi-Fi, we can make it move faster. It's all about speed. But once we get to 60 megahertz, the 60 megahertz interacts with oxygen. And in turn, what that does the frequency impacts the oxygen. So when we're talking about oxygen, it's O, and that represents the atom. But when we're talking about O2, which is oxygen, now we're talking about the molecular structure, which means we're dealing with a covalent bond where only two electrons can stay in the innermost valence and eight at max in the outermost valence. And here you see them covalently bonded, but they're sharing two of the electrons, but we're still dealing with eight total. Okay? This is important. So what happens is with 60 megahertz, when we use this new technology, because what happens is, Coronavirus existed a long time ago, but the technology that we're dealing with today didn't exist a long time ago, and it hasn't been at this amplitude or this magnified ever. So now we see that 60 megahertz can cause electrons to spin. In doing so, we now have to consider the spin frequency of electrons when the oxygen uh, molecular structure, being that it's covalently bonded, and these electrons start spinning. What does that mean to represent for the biological body? Well, what that means to represent is that something called hemoglobin, which is a protein, that's responsible for the uptake of oxygen to be distributed throughout the body can no longer do its job effectively. All this merely means is that the 60 megahertz compromise, this, the, compromise the integrity of the spin frequency of the covalent bonding that transpires within the confines of the oxygen molecular structure causes the biological entity to have problems using oxygen. Okay? That's what that means. That's all this means. Technology is causing us to have problems using oxygen. And what happens when you don't get enough oxygen? You pass out, right? Have you seen the videos with people in China? They just randomly pass out and they say, oh shit, that person got coronavirus. Let's go to the next slide. You'll see what I'm talking about. So, who are the main targets for the coronavirus? They say people with respiratory issues, duh, oxygen. Elderly people, because what? Their oxygen levels on decline. 
their ability to take in oxygen is on a declination. And diabetics, why? Because the less oxygen people have, okay, first of all, diabetics, they call it autoimmune disease, and it definitely is a hormonal disorder. The hormone that's in question is insulin, and insulin does what? Insulin is a hormone, hormones are instructions, and insulin tells the body, particularly the cells, to open up the cell walls to allow blood sugar to go in so it can metabolize. Glucose. So, when the body has a problem doing this, it's called insulin resistance. And this causes people to have problems taking in oxygen. Okay? Let's go to the next slide. So we see these three things in common. The ability to take in oxygen. Coronavirus targets the same people that's targeted when they're subject to 60 megahertz. It's the same symptoms that we're subject to with 60 megahertz that we're subject to with the coronavirus. But we're going to the next one. New technology that is to blame is making us defer our attention to this so-called coronavirus. Go to the next one. Is oxygen key to insulin resistance? I want you to go to this article. You'll be able to click the PDF. You'll be able to see the test yourself. But basically, low oxygen levels at Mount Everest. What they did is took some people with diabetes, brought them to Mount Everest at high altitudes where the air is thinner, as they said, and they realized there was insulin resistance. But when they gave them more oxygen, they realized there was less insulin resistance. Because we now see that oxygen plays an integral role to people that have diabetes. So the 60 megahertz frequency would actually impact people that have diabetes because it causes the hemoglobin to be ineffective. Because hemoglobin is the protein that's responsible for the uptake of oxygen so it can be distributed throughout the human body. Keep all this in mind. Just play the video back. We got to keep going because I got to do this in a short period of time because of Instagram. Let's <laughs> keep going. Give me the next slide. Iron metabolism. What's responsible for your body's ability to metabolize iron? They just found this thing out 30 years ago. 1990s, hepcidin is responsible for the metabolism of iron. But what you got to know is the higher amount, the higher your hepcidin, your hepcidin levels, the lower your ability to absorb iron. Okay? It's actually stupid to think you're going to give people iron pills and raise their iron count. And all you're doing that is raising their hepcidin levels, which is making it harder for them to be able to absorb the iron in the first place. You actually need vitamin D3. Vitamin D3 is a co-effect, a co cofactor of what? Iron. Iron and vitamin D are cofactors, which means one hand washes the other. That's what that means. They need each other. We'll talk about that at another time. Keep going. But that's a key word you need to know, cofactor. Okay? So we're going to look at the BBC News update map. And what we're going to realize is there's cases of coronavirus all over these different places. This is America, but this is Africa. Africa's supposed to be so far behind. Africa's supposed to be so far behind. Yet, when we look at the countries that's being affected that actually have mild cases of coronavirus, the only countries that do, we'll see what? We see Algeria, we see Egypt, we see uh, Nigeria, Cameroon, okay, we see the Congo here, we see South Africa, and these happen to be the countries that China is looking to take over <laughs> in Africa. But we look at the rest of Africa and it doesn't seem to be affected the largest continent. But what we find out now is that there is a ratio advantage to what's going on. So let me tell you about sickle cell anemia. Sickle cell anemia is an advantageous disorder or adaptative disorder. Okay, the, the parasite malaria on the council is coming over here to different climatic conditions, imposed this will on everybody who's killing everybody else, but for us we got saved because the our red blood cells became crescent in shape, deprived us of a certain amount of oxygen, enough to kill the parasites, but enough to still keep us alive. Our body has that mechanism, and so our body created the cure for sickle cell anemia. Having understood this and understand that white people have larger red blood cells, and they also have what? They have higher amounts of hemoglobin. Black people have low amounts of hemoglobin and smaller red blood cells, but it's compensatory because they can't stay in the sun that long. We can't stay in the sun that long. We need to come to terms with what's really going on. That's the end of part one.